So thank you. Uh, this is joint work done with Jonas Kronström and Patrick Doherty. Uh, so I will be starting this talk with a scenario that has motivated our research. And after describing this scenario, I will kind of list the features that we find interesting about this. And I will present how we extended our previously developed planner to be able to handle this. And then I will end with a conclusion. So this uh, paper is kind of an integration paper. Uh, so the scenario that I have in mind is called the surveillance scenario. And in this scenario, we have three types of agents. So they're heterogeneous. We have the fixed wing aircraft, usually with a pilot. And we have helicopters that can be unmanned or could have a pilot. The, they have in common that they can hover in one location. And then we have refueling planes for the uh, fixed wing aircraft to refuel in air. And typically these refueling planes, they're available only in certain time slots and only in certain areas of the whole kind of planning uh, problem area. Uh, so this is kind of a time window as we saw before. Um, in this uh, scenario we also have a lot of different type of goals. We have the standard goals from planning that you want to have the aircraft in a certain position when you end and so on, but we also have what we call um, coverage goals. So this, uh, these kind of goals um, require that you perform a certain type of actions during a, a time interval. So in this case, we have surveillance areas which we want to surveil. And so we would like one of our agents to go to this area and perform a surveillance task uh, for a certain amount of time. So for instance, uh, it could be that you would like to surveil this bridge in Sweden uh, during a three hour interval uh, starting tomorrow at 12 o'clock. That would be a typical goal. So it, it differs from time windows in that this has to be covered. It's not something that takes place in the window. You just have to cover all of this. And typically we also have some extra constraints for this. And so in this case uh, the whole area needs to be surveilled, for instance, every 180 seconds to make sure that no one sneaks across the bridge. So if you plan in this type of uh, scenario you need to uh, reason with time and resources and suppose we have a, a fly action and we then want the planner to choose a velocity for this action we will then get the value for the duration of the action which is a, comes from a linear function of the velocity chosen and we also have a fuel consumption that we need to worry about and uh, this is highly nonlinear in the velocity. So if you fly very slow, you consume a lot of fuel. And if you fly fast, you do it again. Um, and so a, an example could be that we want the aircraft to fly 170 meters per second. And we then get a duration for the flight of this action at 50 seconds, and we consume 31 kilos of fuel. But uh, in any realistic scenario, uh, we have uncertainty. And so we will not have these crisp numbers, but instead we will have whole intervals. So we will say that flying takes between 45 and 55 seconds, and this is an uncontrollable duration. And the fuel consumption will be in a range as well. And of course we will have constraints of time and fuel. So for instance we have these time slots uh, for refueling, and we have these intervals that we want to cover that I mentioned before. And uh, usually one agent is not enough to cover the whole interval. You may have to go and refuel in between. And so you need to synchronize with other agents to make sure that they come in and there is no gap when you hand over. Uh, so in this uh, type of domains, the central features are uh, durative actions uh, with different types of temporal constraints. We have resources and we have uncertainty, which leads to uncontrollable durations and we have nonlinear functions present for the resources. And now I'm going to state something that might not be true, but uh, we could not find any planner that supports all these features efficiently, but there are so many planning papers and so many planners, so I I'm not 100% sure this is true. We could not find it and the reviewers could not find it. So what we did was we started from our previously developed planner, TFPOP, uh, and we extended this. And so to the right you can see a typical plan from TFPOP. Uh, okay, anyway. 
So this planner is uh, agent aware. It knows that there are agents to plan with and every agent has one or more threads and these are totally ordered. And w when it adds actions to the plan, it does so in a forward chaining manner. So it just increments the threads of these total orders. But it's also a partial order planner in the sense that it has a loose commitment between threads. And it's, it uses precondition control so we don't rely on uh, generic heuristics uh, to, to guide the search, but instead we rely on the domain expert to provide some, some knowledge. So if we go back to parameters then for the actions, as I sh showed before, we have this velocity. So where do these values come from? I said that we select a velocity and we do so, and then we take this velocity and we put this into a black box and we let it crunch for a while. And inside this black box, we have a model of the aircraft dynamics and fuel consumption. So it, it calculates this for 3D trajectories, and then it spits it back out to us. And then we take this number and we derive the uncontrollable bounds by factoring in weather and, and like wind conditions. And so here is an example trajectory that I said before that if you, if you want to go at 170 meters per second, you have a fixed aircraft fixed wing aircraft and you want to go and come back but just facing the other direction it might look something like this. And so when we want to put this into the planner uh, we take note that we have this uncontrollable bounded interval and so it makes sense that we use simple temporal networks with uncertainty because this formalism is built upon uncontrollable duration with bounded intervals. And this also gives us the temporal requirements that we need to, to fit these windows and to have this time points for the intervals. So I, I will not go much into detail, but you have a small example down here where you can see typically you have the requirement constraints in the STNU that has to be fulfilled. And then you have the contingent constraints to, to kind of encode the uncontrollable actions. And in the planner we choose to, to uh, integrate the, an incremental STNU algorithm called E2IDC. And we think that it works very well with the forward chaining of the planner, that it incrementally builds the plan. At the same time, you have the STNU incrementally building, so they're kind of in sync. And the STNU is, is uh, also required to be able to handle the surveillance intervals. So typically, if you have this blue interval here, uh, you want to cover this with actions doing surveilling. And these have uncontrollable durations, and so they can be shorter than expected or longer than expected. And so we need the, the, the STNU formalism to be able to verify dynamic controllability and say that we can make sure, we can guarantee that this interval will be covered. And also when we have a synchronization between agents, we can make sure that if one agent finishes his surveillance a bit earlier than expected and the other agent arrives a bit slower, that there is no gap in between here. So STNUs are, are very important here. But they, they uh, merge a bit different with these trajectories. So the thing with the trajectory planner is that we have to give it one velocity and then we get back a value. So we don't get kind of a function that we can use for the planner. And also, since we use STNU, we're kind of committed not to having uh, f continuous bounds. So what we need to do is uh, discretize the par parameter space and we do so by choosing a number of uh, trade-off modes. And so here we trade off between fuel usage and time. So for example, if we have slow, medium, fast, if we go slow, we conserve fuel, but it takes a long time to reach the destination. And so we have tried between these three and up to 40 different velocities. And uh, so each choice of a mode will now give us the bounds that we use in the STNU. And there might be someone out here that recognizes that there is a formalism that works like this. It's called a controllable conditional temporal network with uncertainty. But uh, this formalism is a bit overkill for what we are doing. And it also takes a bit more computation to handle. So we're staying with the ST news in this way. So suppose we have the mode now that we can choose if we want to fly. And suppose we say, let's fly to this bridge that we want to surveil and use the fastest possible speed. And then we continue surveilling this or maybe going and refueling and coming back, but doing a lot of things. And then we want to surveil again, but suddenly we're out of fuel. And now we have a problem because we have a forward chaining planner 
and the choice that probably cost us this problem is in the top. So we have to backtrack all the way to the top in order to change this, uh, and that's of course not good. So what we did here was that we lift the mode choice from the planner. The planner is no longer responsible for the mode. He just adds the actions, like fly and surveil and so on. And then we lift this uh, choice into a global variable in a CSP. So now the CSP is responsible for choosing. And if we end up in the same scenario, the CSP can just go in and globally alter the choice of the first action to medium speed. And now we have fuel. So uh, the integration looks like this. So we have uh, the planner. And for each, every time it adds an action, we also get a choice in the CSP. And when the CSP decides on something, it will put, put the values in the STNU, so it will incrementally grow. And these two grow kind of mirror each other. The CSP, because the CSP is a depth-first search, so it will assign the values in the same way as the E the STNU grows, and if they backtrack, they do it together. Uh, we found that uh, running with a CSP like this, it's, it's not very good because it's not so informed. Uh, it can make a lot of choices that are bad. And so what we did was opt for some deeper integration here. And so we added time to the CSP. And this means that we added a minimum and maximum time for every node in the plan but uh, which corresponds to start and end of actions. But the, some of the nodes correspond also to, to the, the temporal intervals, like uh, the slots for refueling or, or the constraints for when we want to cover. Uh, and we also added uh, projections of the STNU. So we added uh, the all min projection, which is the STN you get when you assume that every, every uncontrollable duration is as fast or as short as possible and we added the all-max projection, and also all the requirements. So basically we take everything we can, which has to do with time, and put into the CSP. And uh, this allows us to test some necessary conditions and filter out some inconsistencies before running the STNU algorithm. So when we profiled the planner, we saw that a lot of the time spent was in the STNU algorithm, and so we tried to avoid this as much as possible. We even went so far as to encode the STNU as a CSP, but this turned out to be slower. So uh, there is future work to be done in that area because there are many ways to encode STNUs as, for instance, CSP or a nonlinear program or a linear program. Well, not linear program, but still. You can do it in many different ways. And there are also uh, different STNU algorithms that you can, can focus on putting in constraint form. So anyway, uh, we also added co choice constraints for sequences. And uh, this allows us to kind of rule out some of the combinations. So we have this constraint that we have to surveil every 180 seconds. And this can be broken down to the fact that the, the aircraft has to pass the bridge and turn around within 180 seconds to be able to see that no car is kind of sneaking by behind it. And, uh, if we then uh, just look at what we have in, in form of time, so we have a max time for surveilling and we have a max time for turning, but because we can have a, max, uh, we can have a slow surveilling uh, mixed with a fast turn, we can't actually prune anything at this point. And so we detect very late uh, what we can prune. So we added these uh, choice constraints for sequences so that we can prune directly. And then we also added feedback uh, from the STNU. So when we do uh, DC verification, we check if it's the temporal network is uh, dynamically controllable. This may lead to tightening of, of uh, several requirement constraints. And so we put this information back into the CSP. And then from the, the planner side, where we have knowledge about interval constraints, we add information to the CSP about these as well. And so basically we try to put everything in the CSP except just DC verification. And w what we get then is that the, all these constraints, they combine kind of powerfully to prune out many solutions. So for instance, this uh, sequence constraint uh, might forbid some of the, the, the max time choices, which in turn forbids some of the larger minimum times. And suddenly we might have a situation where the minimum times no longer cover the interval, and so we can prune these choices. So here are some results. 
uh, we have not benchmarked this against anything else because we didn't find that easy since nobody else kind of supports the same things and also since we have the precondition control so it would be kind of comparing preconditions to, to heuristics or how, comparing how we construct our preconditions to how someone else constructs their HTN information. So uh, what we did was we tested this uh, planner with uh, CSP and standalone STNU uh, DC verification and we made a bunch of the details are in the paper but we made a lot of problems and, and uh, this shows how many it could solve within these uh, 10,000 seconds and then when we do the integration we see that actually we get something from doing this integration suddenly we can solve much more many problems and also we get a slight boost when we add these uh, last uh, things to the CSP. Uh, then we looked a bit about uh, at the mode density so how does many modes affect but I, I feel that this is kind of problem specific so in our case uh, we saw that when we have all the projections added the CSP can filter out anything it doesn't want very quickly and so it, it's, it runs very fast. Uh, so in conclusion uh, we provide a planner that efficiently handles this type of domains where you have resources, parameterized modes, STNU constraints and of course since we have a CSP integrated you could add any type of constraints uh, to the domain but of course CSPs can be quite tough to solve uh, and this is the, the, the final kind of layout of the system where we have the three major components the TFPOP, the CSP and the STNU and we pass information around here uh, so that's, that's my talk Thank you very much. All right, yeah, question. The orange box is behind you. Thank you, great talk. Uh, I have two questions. The first one is um, how often do you actually need to check uh, DC uh, online and not only check it at the end and using just a relaxation like? Uh, pseudo controllability instead of dynamic controllability uh, and the yes so sh should I answer that first or mm, yeah. uh, so we, we we don't need to check it very often um, so when we add this all max all min we almost catch like s we catch so many networks that are not DC yeah. so it, it makes a lot of sense to use this always mm, uh, it okay, helps that, out a lot that was my experience too and uh, the next one is uh, since you are starting to integrate CSP and partially lifted things into your planner, the typical uh, difficulty that you have is that the more lifted things you have and the less inf informed are your heuristics, but the smaller is your search space. So how do you control the, the balance between those, those two things? Mm, I'm not sure I follow the question. Um, yeah, so essentially putting everything in the CSP allows you to shrink your search space, but uh, yes. it makes uh, your heuristics less uh, informed because you are at a uh, higher level and you express more states in the uh, same well we, we don't rely on heuristics. So what do you use? I didn't follow then. Well, we have the precondition control, so it's kind of like an HTN where you give it, uh. you, you tell it how to think, basically, uh, somewhat. You can steer it along some paths. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay. So, I've encountered a similar problem in, in <coughs> some transport settings. If you, just in terms of the shape of the fuel burn function, it was con... Should I go back to It was that always problem? concave, right? Is that always uh, the case? It's, this is from my presentation, so I just drew something. But uh, <laughs> it's somewhat like that, I think. Because like, if that is the case, uh, if it's piecewise linear, certainly the OR community has these dispatch time optimization algorithms. So there's a mm. Japanese researcher, Ibaraki, I can talk to you offline about actually computing the optimal dispatch time. Uh, okay. and, they, and you can do this for events where there's a cadence as well. So field service, in, you know, field service engineering okay. uh, is where, where we were using it with a cadence. Um, so you might be able to borrow some yeah some yeah local I was not search. aware of that yeah, yeah yeah I mean typically we could use since we discretize this into modes as long as you capture what's essential to you you could have any kind of curve and you can just make sure that the modes capture 
you know the, the yeah yours, your techniques is more general yeah yes. for sure yeah yes. <laughs> thank you uh, so thanks for the talk and I understand it's a really hard topic to uh, tackle and one question I'll ask is that all these nonlinear dynamics such as the fuel consumption yes. uh, parallel to uh, the previous uh, question so do you only consider the upper and lower bounds of the possible values they can take or do you ever um, try to understand the functions and how they behave because for instance if you think about the car for instance it, the car has got indicator to go from 0 to 280 kilometers are these your limits or do, does does your limits rely on some kind of function uh, functions so that will be uh, my first question yeah. well I mean this this is just our limits I, I mean how how are we we have limits for the aircraft and so we yeah. can take the speed we have a low speed and kind of a higher speed and so we can just choose modes in between here how, how we would like just to get the modes and then of course if there is a certain specific behavior among these that's interesting this can of course be used by the CSP so you can tell it in which way should you try the modes you should try from lowest consumption that's what we're interested in now or you can try for something else so you, you could have a pattern uh, along with this in the domain as expert knowledge okay uh, my second question is so depending on the value you choose for those parameters nonlinear parameters so apparently in real life the plan quality changes so if you think about it as a, as a complete planning problem, uh, the number of times some of the actions occur in the plan will change. The orderings of those actions can change, and also if there is concurrency, that will even affect. And also, uh, when you think about it, uh, the bounds of if there are multiple uh, parameters, their bounds are kind of uh, linked to each other. In an uh, through a global variable, for instance, their bounds will also be updated. So it's much more of a dynamic, dynamically changing planning problem. So uh, any comments on this? Or? Well, I mean, it's kind of hard when you, you go into these kind of bounds and what affects the bounds. I mean, we have the uncertainty. So one of yeah. the factors we have is the maximum wind speed and the wind direction can change and it affects differently. So if you're fly against the wind in one direction you will have it with you in the next but we, we don't dynamically kind of assume that the wind is your adversary or something like that okay so we, um, we just plan for the worst so I presume scenario. this this uh, approach is domain specific right if I want to uh, get your system and try it on my own PDDL or any standardized domain it, it, it is not PDDL <laughs> no so okay. you would have to encode your problem in, in, in our language so to say all right, uh, thank you. But you can do that. Okay, thank you. We'll have to yes. take any other questions offline, but let's thank our speaker one more time.